Teenage Age Mutant Ninja Turtle was Mutant Mayhem. It was directed by Jeff Rowe and was actually produced by Seth Rogen and that created some intrigue when it came into watching this movie and also I saw a review for this movie by Cinemaze. If you guys have not seen Cinemaze's channel or checked it out, make sure you guys check it out. I will leave a link in the description to his channel. I looked and he gave the movie a very positive review. At first I had no interest in watching this movie whatsoever. I saw the Spider-Verse like style and it didn't really appeal to me. I thought to myself, okay, I'm really not all that interested and plus I didn't really like the direction that they're going in with making the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles much younger than the ones that I'm used to in the other versions. But you know what I gotta say, a lot of this movie actually worked more than a lot of it did not. I actually thought it was very enjoyable. The choice to make the turtles this much younger and to make them actual true teenage mutant ninja turtles was actually very good. And it worked within the messaging of the movie of acceptance because that's a very relatable thing as a teenager and it's also a very relatable story at the fact that these are mutant turtles. I mean they're not going to fit into society. and. I thought that the way they handled the messaging in this movie was actually very well written. Also one thing I really liked about the movie too that I wanted to mention was the fact that even though they made drastic changes to the turtles, and this is why I said multiple times in my videos that if you make drastic changes to a character at least keep the core characteristics of the characters there and make sure you keep the fundamentals and everything that makes those characters those characters and they did exactly that in this movie and they handled it very well like for example with Raphael the one with attitude he's the most violent in the movie that fits within this personality they also did Donatello he's the smart one the nerdy one he likes anime and all that stuff Michelangelo he's a cool one they kept that within his personality, you know, Leonardo being the leader coming into your ship, that just worked very well in this movie and I think that they did a great job handling these characters. Also love the fact that they felt like legit teenagers in this movie. They do a lot of stupid stuff, do a lot of things that we see a lot of modern day teenagers doing and it felt more like a real story in that case i mean sure some things were exaggerated because they have ninja skills they're able to do things that we can't really do or majority of us can't really do uh, but at the heart of it they very much were teenagers and it worked out very well for the story they were telling here also love the voices the voices were a very good choice they sound young and i mean to the point where even one of them hasn't even hit puberty yet And it all works very, very well. And that also leads into another major positive that I didn't expect to like as much as I did when I saw this in theaters was Splinter. Now, when I saw Splinter in the trailers, I was like, oh man, look how they massacre my boy. They have him look like the dad bod. And, you know, I didn't really like the direction that I saw them going in. But within the story that they were telling with these turtles and the way they portrayed Splinter, was a lot more interesting than a lot of other versions of Splinter that I'd seen personally. Because normally Splinter's supposed to be more of that sensei, we never really get that fatherly bond to the extent that they did in this movie. Four was more like, you know, they were like, oh, sensei, you know, but in this one, it's more like, no, he literally does love his boys and everything, every action that he takes in this movie is all geared towards his love for these turtles. And I love the way they handled that story. I also love the way they handled the human dynamic of how he doesn't like the humans. Uh, he tries to keep them safe from them, but ultimately does learn a lesson by the end of it, just like the turtles do. Superfly was actually a pleasant surprise. I was not expecting to like this character in the movie, but the way they played him, uh, actually worked within the story of the turtles as well. Everything that they did in this movie actually worked within the story of the turtles and it blended together quite nicely actually and yes he's not a great villain to me he's like kingpin from into the spider-verse where he's not a great villain but he works within the story to make the story better than what it already is also i gotta talk about the major positive in this movie the animation style is incredible now the human faces look really odd and weird 
but I looked back at some of the turtle comics because I was really, really confused at why their faces looked all distorted and all weird and unproportional. And I think in the comics, their faces looked really unproportionate in some parts. So I think they were replicating the style and the animation style was really, really beautiful. They went for something that was not necessarily across the Spider-Verse or into the Spider-Verse. It had elements of that, but it was for sure representing a graphic novel, especially in its color choices and uses of special effects such as smoke screens. Smoke screens look like scribbles. Characters look over-exaggerated with over-exaggerated poses that look like something out of a graphic novel. And things look like they're scribbled with crayons which again adds a very graphic novel feel to it. Now let's talk about the controversial part of this movie and that is April O'Neil. Now I have a couple of takes on this but most of them are positive. First of all I do like the story that they did tell with April O'Neil. It actually worked for the character and the way they played that off worked within the story very well with her wanting to be a reporter that's very much within April O'Neil's character, I mean. And then everybody feels a sense of anxiety at some point in their life. Uh, maybe not everybody, but a relatable character, in my opinion, does. And the way they played that in the story felt much more relatable and hit harder home as someone who had anxiety in the past of being on camera and things like that. And had a great character arc by the end, really making friends with these turtles, and I love the way they played that. Now, April O'Neil is normally known as a white character in the main run of the shows, the movies, but originally in the comic books she was either black or Asian. She might have been Blasian. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what she was, but she changes around a lot in the comic books. Some versions she's black, some versions she's white. In the TV shows, sometimes she's white, sometimes they change it up. Ultimately, April O'Neil is what the stories need her to be. It doesn't really matter the color of her skin at all. But I will say personally that the design that they went with for a black April O'Neil in this version didn't really look like April O'Neil and it didn't really work for me. I'm like, yeah, she can be black, but why does she have to be fat as well? Like, it, it was something like that that was just like, okay, like, why are we drastically making the character look n and not anything really like her original counterpart or even from the comic books but uh the story worked it was just some things that i don't think worked very well in that regard and let me get into the negative the ending is not very memorable i can really write off the ending it feels really cliche there's a lot of elements in there i did not like for the ending especially superfly turning into a mega monster thing We've seen this a billion times, then they have to come together, everybody accepts the turtles, blah blah blah, happy ending, and to me it didn't really work as well. Uh, the message at the end worked, but it felt so cliche and stereotypical that it just didn't work for me personally. And there were some things with the faces, even though I know the animation style was going for that uh, distorted face look like the comic book. Ultimately, for a movie though, a lot of the characters were really hard to look at and if they were a human character. All in all, I mean, I think this movie was a fun time. I mean, I have minor gripes here and there in the story. Some jokes didn't really land as well as others. But uh, arguably, none of the original movies and the Ninja Turtles were really good movies. But they were a lot of fun. I feel like this one is the most objectively good Ninja Turtles movie. So with that being said, I'm giving a good, solid film rating. I cannot believe that all the best films this year are being released at the end of the summer. Or close to the end. Uh, outside of Across the Spider-Verse. But it is what it is. But what did you guys think of the Turtles movie if you guys have seen it already? Did you guys like, share, and subscribe today to join the idealization?